The Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning in verse 29. John, chapter 1, uh, let's begin reading in verse 28. John, chapter 1, verse 28. The Bible says, These things were done in Beth Abera, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said after me, Cometh the man which is preferred before me, or he was before me. And I knew him not, but he that but he that should be made manifest to Israel, therefore I am come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode on him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is which he baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear what record, this is the Son of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we give you great glory and honor for all that you do. Lord, we thank you for this little church. We pray that we would uh, uh, stand fast and that you would make us strong in the, in the days in which we live. Lord, we pray uh, for the gospel's sake that you would get it out to other people. There's so much falsehood. We pray that you would bless and that you would magnify the truth that's held in this book. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, very familiar verses of Scripture tonight. And I love the Gospel of John because uh, John gives the notoriety and displays Jesus as the very God of heaven the son of the living God, where the others more present him as a servant. But we find that John presents him really as the God-man, the Lord Jesus Christ, gives him all the bounty, all the glory, and all the honor that is due his name. And he does it even from the very beginning. Now, the writer of John is John the Apostle, and the person we see first come on the scene is John the Baptist, and you will find that they both give him the same notoriety. Uh, in this gospel, we'll find that the Apostle John lays his head on the Lord Jesus' breast and says, Is it I? Uh, he didn't even trust himself enough to think that he, he wasn't too good to betray him. And, and so we find that it should be a magnificent thing when we see Jesus presented not as servant, but rather as king, as the one that's preferred because he is preferred. And you know what? This is the truth of the matter. The Lord, uh, unless the Holy Ghost opens that to you, you'll never see it. Right. Uh, it'll be a word on the page and you'll continue yeah. reading. But John saw, John the Baptist saw for exactly what it was. Now, going back to verse 28, the Bible says this, he, uh, These things were done in Bethabara. Now, the reason that he did that, this was actually where John the Baptist's ministry was at. And the reason the location is important is because it was a long, long way from Nazareth. And he had gone that distance to be baptized. That would be like me walking from my house down to Dixon. And uh, that's a long way. Uh, I've, I've drove it many times, but I certainly don't want to walk it. And, and, and he considered scriptural baptism so important that he was willing to do it. Now, you Campbellite people will say that there's a difference of the baptism of John and the baptism of, John, uh, of the Lord Jesus, but I never see that. Uh, uh, it is all to show honor and it all is to indicate what happens in salvation. Not, not It doesn't cause salvation, but it, it's a picture of Amen. what salvation Amen. is about. Now, um, and it's always been that way. It, it, it will always be that way. And, and, and so we find that what, <clears throat> you know, and I, I told this to a fellow at work the other day and he he thought, uh, he looked at me like I had six heads. I said, really? I said, we as Baptists probably emphasize Baptists least 
of all the denominations you'll find out there. And I said, because we don't think it's at all integral to be born again. And he just stared at me. I said, but it is important. And it's important that you have it right. Uh, and, uh, you know, men that are sent, uh, I mean, study baptism carefully. Um, it's under the church. Uh, and it's under their authority, but men do it. And, uh, you know, if I, if I follow, and I'm not trying to preach heresy, but if I follow it right, it doesn't necessarily even have to be an ordained man. It just has to be a man who is with the church. And, and, and so we find that the Lord Jesus makes this long walk in, in, in the heat in the summertime just because of the importance of baptism. Now, uh, verse 29, in the next day, John seeth the Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things in this. First of all, the identifying factor, he knew who he was. You know, when the Lord Jesus returns again, I don't think anybody's going to have to point him out to me. And if I go in the grave, instead of going in the catching away, when I arrive on that shore, I don't think anybody's going to say, well, that was Jesus. Uh, he understood him, and he knew him. And you know what? That's what we call a revealed truth. The person of Christ is a revealed truth. Uh, it, it doesn't come by study. It comes by the uh, Spirit of God. And, and so he makes it very clear. He says, that's him. That's the one I've told you about. That's the one I've been looking for. It is the Lamb of God. Now, in saying that he is Lamb, is immediately, and it meant to the Jews, it, it meant to the Jews more than it does us, it immediately knew that he had a defined period of time. It, it, it meant his death was coming. Even from the beginning, that's the lamb. Because the lamb always had a specific purpose, and that was for sin. Mm -hmm. Also, and if the Jews had sense enough to look at this, you didn't offer just any lamb, although they had got to where they were. They were mm -hmm. doing the halt and the main. And, but it also meant Jesus was perfect, that he was the sinless one. He was the true lamb. And, and, and all that they missed, and we certainly shouldn't, and if you know him the way I do, you won't, but they said, behold, but he said, behold the lamb of God. Notice this, which taketh away the sin yeah. of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to notice two things. It does not say sins. It says the sin. The whole, well, what is the difference? You're like, well, you're straining the dance. No, I'm not. Sin is our nature. Sins is the things we do. See, He changes our nature. He, he died as a penalty for our sinful, stinking nature. Every sin was paid for. I don't mean to minimize that, but I just want to see this verse specifically says to take away the sin. The, our nature to make us something different, to make us something better, to change us from the inside out. That was the purpose of Him coming, and that that was the purpose of Him dying. Now, uh, a lot of Armenian people, this is a verse the Armenians will use to say, y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of hard shells. It's the sin of the world. Now, uh, if uh, I said the RNs of the world... How many people does that include in here? One. One. If I said the barbers of the world, how many does that include? Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. So when he said that, he was dying for his own. The sin of his people. Not the sin of others. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I fully believe this. Esau never had a chance and Esau's atonement was never paid because he was not the preferred son. And I don't understand that. Maybe sometimes to my, to my flesh it doesn't seem fair. But I do know this. I trust it by divine grace that it's good and proper because that's what Christ did. Yeah. And, and, and so we see that he makes this wonderful statement that probably only spoke to just a few. Then verse 31, it says, I knew him not. And he didn't mean that in a spiritual sense. He meant that, oh, I don't, that's Jesus uh, the son of Mary and Joseph, 
He said, I, did, I didn't know him like that, which I think is unusual because they were distant cousins. But I have distant cousins I've never met. Me and one of my good cousins, uh, we talk on uh, Facebook a lot. I haven't seen her probably since the 70s. Uh, but, you know, if she came in, someone would probably say, now that's Joyce. And the reason why, I haven't seen her in so long. The last time, the last time I saw Joyce, I was five. And uh, so that's been a long, long, and I'm certain, I know I don't, and I'm pretty certain Joyce don't look like she did when she was 32 since she's 80 now. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's been some changes along the way, and so uh, uh, he uh, he didn't identify him. He didn't recognize him for who he was, but he did recognize this characteristic that he was the answer to sin. He said, "Oh, I know him. He's my cousin." But he didn't know he was the answer to sin. That's why pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ irritate me because they have no idea what he looked like, and so we find. The very same thing with John pointing and said, "That's him. This is whom I expect. This is whom I, I said. After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me." Now I want you to see the humbleness of John, and the reason I want to point that out to you: humbleness is becoming a very, very rare quality. Um, we're overrun with pride. You know, instead of sharing the gospel, we got the truth and I'm going to throw it in your face. Mm. That's, that, that's pride, right? Mm. And, and so I want you to see that immediately the response to John the Baptist was this. He is better. He is more appropriate. He is more effective than me. And John had a wonderful ministry. And he yet and still knew that Christ was much preferred over him. Sure. And so we see that he, he understands the person of Christ even though he didn't know him carnally. Now, I, I say that to say this. You can understand the person of Christ even though we've never seen him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that Damascus Road experience that Paul had, he said... He said, Who art thou, Lord? He knew who he was, did he not? If he didn't, why did he call him Lord with the big L? Amen. He knew who he was. Isn't it a glorious day if you think back in your life when the Lord manifested himself to you and took your sins away? And, and you could say, Who are you, Lord? What, what a glorious day. Never stop seeking that. Never stop looking for that. And, and so we see that he uh, identifies him and said, this is the one, this is the answer to your sin, and identified his ability. Verse 32, And John bare record, saying, And I saw the Spirit, capital S Spirit, meaning the Holy Ghost, descending uh, from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Now, I personally, I don't know, uh, I don't think a dove came down literally. Uh, because it said, I saw the Spirit descending like a dove. Now, what, what does a dove, what do we use doves for? Uh, they can send a message just like a pigeon. Mm -hmm. And they're a symbol of peace. Mm -hmm. They're very, very smart creatures. So the message was being identified with that one. He, he's the one. He's the one. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the answer to sin. He's the sufficient sacrifice. That's what the dove was saying to all those about. And it had already been a message that certainly John said but would understand when it came. Uh, verse 13, I knew him not, but he that came to baptize with, that, that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining, on him, the same is which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now, man, that's something that's been taken out of context down through the years, mm -hmm. but it's a little something that I want to be involved in. Well, what does that really mean? It's not flopping on the 
um, floor like a fish out of water. It ain't slobbering uh, at the mouth like a thirsty cow, but it is understanding things on a brand new realm. Just flooded with that truth. Mm -hmm. You ever st studied the scripture over and over and just did not understand even any relevant relevance to anything else and then one day it just pops open that's the flooding of the Holy Ghost and and that's what he said that that it was that clear to him of who he was you know um, and I don't want to flop on the floor and I understand what baptism of the Holy Ghost is about it's not about running around the building and screaming but I want to understand those scriptures just that way don't you the older I get the more I see is that's where I need to spend my time. And we, we gain some understanding of the Word of God. And, and so we see that John the Baptist was certainly excited about the, the verification of the Holy Ghost. Now, how does someone sit in church the entirety of their life and never understand the person of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's this right here. They've never seen the dove descending. They've never seen uh, him, uh, him uh, authenticated by the Holy Ghost. They've never seen him as the answer to their sin in a spiritual and divine holy way. And we find that John did, and it made him very, very happy. You know what? Even the, the horribleness of your sin, when you see them in the light of God, it'll make, you, it, it'll make you sick to what you've done, but it'll make you glad that you see things like God. Man. Uh, and that's the experience John the Baptist was having. Verse 34. And I saw and bear record, this is the Son of God. Now, why is that significant? There, there's two reasons. First of all, John the Baptist was the first one to say it. To say this is him. Mm -hmm. And secondly... <laughs> It put the bullet, it, it put the bait on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. From the very beginning of his ministry, he was a marked man. And if you know the story, they both were. Uh, I always thought it was interesting. You know, John the Baptist did not, th this was blasphemy to the Jew, saying that man is Jesus Christ. He is the answer to sin. He is Messiah. That would have been blasphemy to them. But that's not what took John's head. You know what took John's head? Preaching against sin. You know how you sure. still lose your head? Preaching against sin. Yeah. yeah. Get a bunch of sodomites uh, together and been talking about the goodness of God. So, and I won't say her name, but I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. Girl, I knew all, all my life, ever since me and Donna first uh, started seeing one another, uh, I just was posting scriptures. And I, I posted a scripture concerning the love of God. And she wrote me back and said about, well, what about the LBGT, whatever they call it? And I said, well, the best way you can love them is give them the gospel. But see, everybody's always got, they don't love Christ anymore. Uh, no, and that, exactly. And, and, and so we find as the Lord's people, don't be surprised when you end up like John. And usually, and it won't even be related to the things of God, it'll be related to the things of men. And so he identifies him for who he was. Verse 37, And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Now, we never know for sure the identity of these two men. Some uh, su uh, suggest that it was John and his brother. Uh, some suggest that it was Peter and his brother. But there's really not clear. And the only reason I don't agree with that is because their callings are very much lined out in Matthew's Gospel, and it's not like this right. because they were down fishing somewhere. Right. So whoever they were, we may never know that until we get to glory. He began to call people immediately. And, you know, uh, have you ever had to give up a friend? Death or, or, you know, they just started hanging out with a different crew. That's what's happening 
And he says, well, that's him. He just, he's preferred before me. And two of them listened. And they followed Christ. Mm -hmm. But now remember this. They weren't the only two that John had. So that gets back to us as we're talking about the, the children of Israel. And we find two that came out of that, two. Four and a half million people and two that followed, followed the Lord God to the end. And two of these probably large number of John's disciples turn around, obedient to what God says, and begins to follow Christ. Verse 38, And then Jesus turned and, said, and saw them following, and saith unto them, Whom seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is being interpreted, Master or Teacher or Master Teacher, Where dwellest there, thou? And he said, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Now, I want you to see that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, readily received them. Now, sometimes when we get so hung up on predestination, and listen, I enjoy preaching on this, just remember this too. He, he never rejected the one that followed him. Uh, because, see, those lambs that belong to him will follow him. So, you know, until I'm pushing up daisies somewhere, what I'm going to do, I'm going to preach the gospel. Uh, I, I don't think I'll get in one that ain't supposed to be there, do you? And, and, and so we find that these two men, whomever they were, obediently followed the Lord Jesus Christ and began to fellowship and spend time with him. Now, very quickly, go back to the first of uh, John, uh, John 1 1, and we're going to read a few things there and then we'll be uh, dismissed. Uh, John in the first verse, first chapter, first verse, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, uh, I, I, again, John begins to present from the very beginning as Christ as God. The, uh, and the Word, person of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Word was God. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to get that around your head, but God is just as much Christ as God, and Christ is just as much Christ as God, and the Holy Ghost is just as much God as both of them, because they're all the same person in three different specific offices. And they all do that. <laughs> he does all three offices well. And so he, he wants the believers, he wants the, the people that were reading about the history of, of, the Lord's, of the Lord's own ministry, he wanted them to know this first, that God has, Jesus has always been God. He has always been there from the very beginning. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. And, and you can read about that in the creation of the earth in which we now live. The Bible says that the Spirit moved across the waters, uh, the Holy Ghost existing even back in the form of creation. And then God the Father says, let us make man, let us make man, let all of us as a group together make man in our own image. He's always been there, always will be there, will always... Uh, 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 will always accomplish things well. He says he's always been. You know, people that uh, get hung up on this little Jesus in a manger, I, I don't believe they understand Christ very much, do you? Uh, they don't understand the work of Christ, the ministry of Christ. That's just something, again, that the Catholics got started, and because uh, we're made like we're made, we embrace it. You know, I've seen a whole lot, uh, a whole lot more people embrace some kind of little statuette of Christ than embracing the person of Christ, haven't you? And so we see that that's kind of where we're at. Verse three: All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Now we see there that even Christ was omnipotent, all-powerful in all things. Uh, you know uh, why 
Madam, Madam Marilyn O'Hare existed because God raised her up just like he did Pharaoh. Sure. You know why? There's an abortion clinic down at the edge of the black part of town in Nashville because there's some ungodly, wicked people that God raised up. Do I know why? No, I don't know why, but I know that he did it. Not one person takes breath outside the will of the Almighty. Yeah. And, and, and so we find that huh, as John is writing this, he said, I want you to understand that Christ is God and God is Christ and they're both of the Holy Ghost. They're all together in one. They all are doing very, very well. In him was life and life was the light of men. Now, have you ever wondered why everybody ain't saved? The light's just not been turned on. When, when you flip the light on, the most horrifying thing you will see is yourself. Hopeless, helpless, debauched, vile, black with sin. But the good thing about seeing it is you also see the answer. That's getting, the, that's getting the light turned on. And he says, this is how it's done. This is, this is what, you know, that's why I fully believe this. And I understand, and I believe people have at least been uh, made aware of the Lord God Almighty. But, you know, the Bible says this, that the foolishness of preaching. That's how the light gets switched on. That's why I don't believe these little books. And at the end of it, you say a little prayer and sign your name. God ain't within a thousand miles of that stuff. Through the foolishness of preaching. Think about other groups tonight. How many of them are really having a preaching service? Most Wednesday night services consist of a meal and uh, something to eat. I mean, a meal and a little Bible class. That's it. Uh, I was, was buzzing in. Me and Sarah, and we passed what used to be the Midway Church. They call it Grace now. And I saw a man going in, and man, he was dressed to preach. I thought, well, at least they're doing something there. I don't think they were just having a, uh, a pizza down in the basement. That's good, is it not? And, and, and so we see then, as the Lord's people, that John understood Christ to a T. In him was life, and the life, life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, what are you going to do about that? Nothing. Preach the light again. That is the only thing you can do. Tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ again. But see, because the comprehension of the person of Christ has nothing to do with age and IQ. It has all to do with the Holy Spirit and Him saying, tell them, tell them I am sent you. Right. A very simple message He gave to Moses, wasn't it? But you know what? It worked, didn't it? Very simple message. Two words. What would y'all do if I did a two-word sermon one morning? It'd be an effective one, though, would it not? And, and, and so we see then that that is a revelation that comes only from the Almighty. But with that said, keep preaching, keep teaching, keep bumping into people at, uh, at Frank's and telling them of the goodness of God. Verse 9. That was, uh, excuse me, verse 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh to the world, meaning John, saying that is Jesus. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Right. Now, if you get nothing else out of this message, underline the end of that verse, the world knew him not. And you know what? The world will never know him. You know why we have such ungodliness today? They don't know Christ. You know, I was seeing, and you know, and even, you know, 
shame on conservative media. Uh, President Biden tripped today, and his, his uh, one of his consorts had to catch him. You know what? Conservative media was making fun of him. You know, I follow all the time. It, it does no good to do that. Does that speak the name of Christ? It certainly doesn't. You know, you know why Biden is in the uh, White House and we, we recount the votes and all the foolishness that went on. Biden's in the White House because God wanted him there. And we said easy and know that God did. Remember this, when the most bizarre things happen, and I remember this, when little Abram got his hand cut off and then Don was on the way to Vanderbilt to be with Jared and Heather. Uh, you know, this, this is awful. I remember just as clear and peaceful the Lord God say, I do with all things well. I don't know why I don't know why that happened, but I know it was good. Yeah. Something good will come from it. Sure. And uh, uh, when things are breaking loose, you remember that. <clears throat> when it doesn't seem that there's anything normal left. You remember that the Lord God doeth all things well. And more than that, He always, always, in some little point or method, bringeth glory unto Himself. That's it. And uh, we need to give Him praise for that.